Anyhow, this is going to be Roman and Romans number four. What do you want? Last time I read seven, eight, and nine, which was a very interesting, two very interesting chapters. No, sit down. No, no. Sit. Sit. Good boy. But anyway, which was very two, inter very two interesting chapters. Uh, I am a little sleepy. I've been trying for three nights actually to do this. So it's been pretty hard. So if I kind of slur, I don't mean to. But I'm going to try my best. And I'm going to do my best for the Lord. For reading the scripture. So um, just bear with me. So first of all, we see that Paul is talking about Israel. Um, he is a Pharisee, of course. And he has Pharisee and Pharisee background as a background as a Pharisee and he is of the tribe of Benjamin he is of Israel you know but he's a Christian so anyway let me go ahead without further ado and read this it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God but not according to to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Man made theology. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. <clears throat> but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring Christ again from the dead but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which we preach that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, see how that works in tandem? Let me read it one more time. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so you have to believe it in your heart to know and speak it from your mouth right let's see here for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the name for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Doesn't matter what color you are, pink or purple, polka dot what have you, black, white, it doesn't matter. How then shall they call on whom they have not to believe? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all but obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, 
and their words unto the ends of the world. That is civilization where people live and uh, groups of people, nations. I'm not talking about the planet Earth. Well, the Earth rather. I don't like using the word planet. It's, the planet doesn't wander, so I mean the Earth doesn't wander, so therefore it's not a planet. I could go into detail about that, but I'm not. Um, but I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are not that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. What are you doing? But Isaiah, Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found in them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Chapter 11. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not the scripture saith of Isaiah, Elias, rather, how he maketh intercession of, to God against Israel, saying, <clears throat> Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is of, and then it, it, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh. <coughs> he seeketh for. But the election hath obtained it. And the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, have they stumbled, that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the re reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life? From the dead. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. For it is the oh, and if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou boastest not to the not the root, but the root thee. 
thou wilt save thou wilt say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Grafted in, not grafted, but graft. Well, well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high minded, but fear. For if God spare not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. See, if they abide still not in unbelief. That's different. Some people say, well, you know, uh, I don't believe it now. I mean, you know, I'm a Christian, so I should be saved. But you got to be a person of who believes in God. But if you abide in unbelief, that shows what? You're not a Christian, right? Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, what in the world is going on here? Okay, so uh, let's see. Forgot my spot. Oh, for thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree. How much more shall these? which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this, of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part is happened to Israel unto the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away un <coughs> ungodliness from Jacob see for this is my covenant with them unto them when I shall take away their sins as concerning the gospel they are enemies for your sakes but as touching the election they are beloved for the father's sakes for the gifts and calling of the God are without repentance. God doesn't take back what he gives. It's like, ah, I don't think you should have it. Let me take it back. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways past finding out! For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him... And through him and to him are all things, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Man, I love this scripture. I really do. Um, let's see, I might have time to read chapter 12. If it cuts off, you know, then you know why. <laughs> see, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you re present your bodies as... Uh, bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, 
according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the pro proportion of our of faith. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the pro um, proportion, sorry, of faith. <coughs> <coughs> our ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, forever in the spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessities of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind, same mind, be on the same page in the same book, one toward another. Mind not high things, but be, but condescend to men of low estate. <coughs> be not wise in your own conceits. <coughs> Recompense to no man evil for evil. Prov provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as it lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, for in so doing rather, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. <coughs> This is good stuff. Really good stuff. And unfortunately, that's the mess up with our society today. There's so many churches out there. Uh, Baptist churches, Presbyterian churches, Church of God, um, Holiness. Um, all those churches out there. They're so traditionalized. They're so focused on um, doing things that are... Uh, traditional, and you know, and, and within their own um, <coughs> way, <coughs> excuse me, way of thinking, and that's not what the Lord is telling us here through the Holy Spirit through Paul. Um, it's it's a perfect way, the more perfect ways in the, what God's Word says in the Bible. It's not a, about traditional sets, and it's not about um, uh, uh, church bylaws or and, and things like that. It's by faith in Jesus Christ. It's by faith and knowing that God has given us uh, what every and everything we need to lay out here in His Word. You know, and um, we don't need that any man teach us, but the Holy Spirit, which the Lord has given us, He teaches us. He teaches us through, in this case, of Paul. He teaches us through John, Mark, um, Peter, all the rest of them. You know, and. Um, uh, as long as it lines up with scripture and then, that a man teaches us a preacher preaches the word you know great that's the way it should be it should be directly from God's word in the Bible the true Bible the true Bible that has all of God's words you know and there's only one as far as I'm concerned that's the authorized version but um any other thing it's a uh, manipulation you know Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I hope you enjoyed it. 20 minutes is long enough, don't you think? But anyway, I appreciate you watching. If you watch, 
and God bless and I hope you take care and we'll see you next time.